Good day to you one and all. It is I, Justin Hawkins, and this is Justin Hawkins Rides Again. This is a really sad day today because Shane McGowan has died. Um, and I know that for years now, whenever Shane McGowan comes up in conversation, somebody always seems to say to me, oh, you know, he hasn't got long left. But he kept going for ages, actually. I mean, it's been, it's been ill for a while, I think. Unfortunately, today was the day. I mean, there's a lot of tributes being published already, so there's, there's no need for me to get into that, I don't think. But I... I recommend you go and have a look at the stuff that other people in the trade are, are, are saying about his um, legacy and his career and everything. Um, but I'm going to focus on the, the Christmas song because, you know, I'm a Christmas songs guy. Um, so I'll I'll revisit the uh, Pogue's Christmas hit, Fairy Tale of New York, I think. Justin Hawkins rides again. Sorry, I've just woken up again. Um... Yeah, it's, pretty, it's just awful news. It's like some people will go, "Well, he was sixty-five and he and he did drink a lot and all that sort of stuff," but it's just still no age at all. And um, especially when someone creative like that, who's contributed so much to my childhood, my parents used to listen to the Pogues all the time, so his voice is beautifully familiar to me. Every time I hear it, I'm just like I'm transported back to my childhood. Really, my dad was especially into the Pogues. When I when I finally look at um, Fairy Tale of New York. Um, I'll only be able to play short clips because of copyright. I know, I know that's infuriating for some people, but you'll have to forgive me on this occasion. Um, Shane McGowan formed an Irish punk band called Pogue Mahone in the 80s, which is a play on words as phonetically it means kiss my ass in Irish. Um, it was later shortened to the Pogues in 1982, and they released seven studio albums. Um, in 1988, Kirsty McCall collaborated with the Pogues and the Christmas song Fairy Tale of New York, which was written by Shane McGowan and uh, Jim Finer, and that got to number two in the UK chart, like all of the best Christmas songs tend to. You know, obviously The Darkness is one got to number two, and also uh, Last Christmas by Wham. And these are considered the greatest Christmas songs of our time. Not The Darkness one, but the other two. Um, in the UK, Fairy Tale of New York is the most played Christmas song of the 21st century, and it's frequently cited as the best Christmas song of all time. I totally agree with that. I think it is the best Christmas song of all time. It's the one you try and beat when you sit down and pick up a guitar and go, right, I'm going to write a Christmas song. And I had a go at writing a Christmas song with... Uh, I've forgotten his name now. Uh, it was an Irish comedian, actually. And um, the first line we had was, children roasting on an open fire. Well, not with that melody. But uh, even that, even that sterling effort didn't even touch the sides. Compared to Fairy Tale of New York, it was a, a mere drop in the ocean. So, yeah, let's have a look at it and uh, celebrate Shane McGowan and, and Kirsty McCall. I mean, she, she died in terrible, awful circumstances a few years ago. So, unfortunately, now Kirsty McCall and... Uh, Shane McGowan are no longer with us, um, but this is this is their legacy, really, isn't it? Or part of their legacy, the Fairy Tale of New York, the most wonderful Christmas song of all. Again. And it's a great video too. It was Christmas Eve, babe. That really looks like. Uh, Matt Dillon marching him into the uh, drunk tank there. He's probably not there. An old man said to me, won't see the old man that says won't see another one looks like he's in his 30s. <laughs> I mean, times were a bit harder back then. And then he sang a song The rare old mountain tune I turned my face away and dreamed about you. God, I'm the lucky one. I mean, talk about not giving a fuck. He never gave a fuck. Really, really inspiring. Came in. He's not trying to look beautiful. He's just got a fag on, singing his song. Lips curled in a snarl. <laughs> There's only one Shane McGowan. He'll never be replaced. I think he's talking about winning some money on the horse racing and how that gives him, I don't know, hope for a better year. They got cars big as bars, they got rivers of gold, but the windows right through you, it's no place for the old. When he first took my hand on a cold Christmas Eve, you promised me Broadway was waiting for me. 
What a voice. Ghost of the Cold was amazing. You were handsome. You were pretty queen of New York City. When, when the band, band finished playing, they held up for more. I think this has got to be the greatest duet. Isn't it one of the greatest duets of all time? It's got to be, isn't it? I mean, I suppose if there's a close second, it would be Tina Turner with Brian Adams doing It's Only Love. Sinatra was swinging, all the drums they were singing. We kissed on the corner, then danced through the night. The boys of the Envoy Choir were singing, go away, play. And the bells were ringing out for Christmas Day. I've never seen a more nonchalant uh, piccolo player. What is that? Is it a recorder or something? I don't know. What are we going to call that? A piccorder. That's it. It's a piccorder. <laughs> or there's some sort of other whistle. Is it a whistle? I don't know. I don't know much about um, traditional Irish instruments. Please use the comment section to educate me. <laughs> but in general, that the overall kind of... Uh, Delivery style is just one of nonchalance. It's it's just what you want to see. Imagine like playing that kind of music and trying too hard. It'd be horrible. You're an old slut and jumbler, and horrible. And some, here comes the bawdy lyrics that made this so controversial at the time. Um, not the kind of stuff you can say anymore. I thought they'd changed it. I thought they'd... Uh, I thought they'd taken a bit of, um, I thought they'd taken a, a, a section of um, Kirsten McCall's vocal where it, she said something that sounded a bit like the F word they've just used there and then glued it in using, I don't know, AI or something. But this is the, obviously the original upload from 11 years ago before they gave a shit about any of that stuff. Happy Christmas, your arse, I pray God it's our last. <laughs> Merry Christmas, your arse, I pray God it's our last. What a lyric. It's really funny because the band don't even seem aware of each other, let alone the camera. And then suddenly the bass player just gives us a little side smile. So many people smoking in this. This must have been challenging for the uh, MTV generation. You weren't allowed to do any of that by the end of the 80s, I don't think. Kept them with me, babe. I put them with my own. Can't make it all alone. I built my dreams around you. <laughs> there seems to be like a military ensemble playing the uh, traditional Irish instruments there as well. Really solid piece of one-handed snare work there. It's a hell of a band, isn't it? the greatest Christmas song ever written. It's utterly amazing, isn't it? I'm going to watch that again and again today in tribute to Shane McGowan. Rest in peace. And you know what? I suggest you do the same. There has never been and never will be a better Christmas song than that. And trust me, a lot of us have tried. I'm not joking. It's fucking awesome. Um, really concise, an unrequited uh, optimist singing, uh, well, trying to, trying to woo or re-woo um, the, the, not an end word, his love interest. It's just, it's a beautiful song. It really is. Um, even if it's got all that sort of rude words in it. <laughs> Justin Hawkins writes again, again. Above all else, listen to the Pogues today. If you start with the fairy tale of New York and work back from there, you won't regret it. It's an amazing, amazing ensemble full of brilliant music. Nice one, guys. Rest in peace, Shane McGowan. Cheers.